Hello, everyone, and thank you all for joining us during the Lithum Partners Summer 2022 Investor Conference. My name is Adam Lowensteiner, Vice President of Lithum Partners. During this fireside chat, we welcome GSE Systems, ticker symbol of GVP, that is Golf Victor Peter on the NASDAQ Stock Exchange. Today, we are joined by members of the GSE Senior Management Team to discuss the status of the industry and what the company's experience in the current environment. Today's guests are Kyle Loudermilk, President and CEO, Dr. Baram Misami, Chief Technology Officer, Don Horn, President of Engineering Performance Group, and Brian Green, VP of Workforce Solutions Group. Before we begin, for those not familiar, Lithum Partners is one of the country's leading relation, investor relations firms with more than two decades of corporate access experience. We've built one of the most, one of the industry's most diverse and effective platforms for connecting small cap companies with high quality and focused institutional investors while creating a framework of best practices in all aspects of investor relations. Today's discussion is hopefully yet another example where we can bring value to multiple constituents. We will dive into the discussion in a moment, but one final item, I want to remind everyone that GSE is available for one-on-one -on -one meetings later this week. If you have not already signed up, please send me an email at uh, lowensteiner at lithumpartners.com or visit www.lithumpartners.com forward slash virtual and click the one-on-one -on -one meeting request button. I'd like to now pass it off briefly to uh, Kyle Loudermilk, President and CEO of GSE Systems, to make some introductory remarks. Kyle? Yeah, thanks, Adam. And I'd like to welcome everybody uh, here. It's a special session. We have our key operational executives who are going to share with investors their perspectives on our business. We have Don Horn, who ends up our engineering line of business, Brian Green, who heads up our workforce solutions line of business, and Dr. Baram Mesami, who's our chief technology officer, really in working through the company, uh, creating all those uh, fantastic new simulation uh, solutions and software products that we bring to market. So, um, with that said, gentlemen, thanks for being available. And Adam, I'll hand it to you to facilitate the conference. Great. Thanks, Kyle. And again, uh, thank you everyone for joining. Why don't we start by going around uh, and everyone can let us know what your background is and, and what you do for GSC. Let's start with Don, then Brian, then Baram. Okay. Uh, thanks, Adam. Uh, pleasure to be here this morning, uh, afternoon in some parts, but uh, uh, my name is Don Horn, as Adam mentioned. Uh, I head up the uh, engineering services division for GSE, uh, basically leading our, our, our three primary service areas of design and analysis, simulation, and programs and performance. Uh, it's a little bit of background on myself. Uh, I'm an electrical engineer by education, uh, BSWE with a focus in power generation, uh, Colorado State University, uh, way back in the past. Uh, about 35 years of experience in the nuclear industry. Uh, it, it covers startup, power ascension, commercial operation, uh, and then uh, uh, con specialized consulting support for a number of years. Uh, basically, it, that was in the role of uh, True North Consulting. I founded True North Consulting in uh, 1999, really targeting a, uh, a specific niche in the engineering programs area. And then we were eventually acquired by GSE in 2018, which has evolved into my current role. Um, I'm Brian Green. Uh, as Kyle mentioned, I'm the vice president of our workforce solutions group uh, that's uh, made up of uh, companies uh, Absolute Consulting and Hyperspring. Um, between the two groups, uh, we offer specialized technical staffing uh, and specialized uh, training services uh, throughout the uh, energy and engineering sectors. Uh, just a brief bit on my background. So I've spent my entire career uh, in the staffing industry, uh, a little over 17 years now, uh, with uh, most of that focused within the energy and engineering sectors uh, and a very, very, very large portion of that within the nuclear industry. Very good. Uh, thanks, Brian. Um, my name is uh, Baram Meisami. I am uh, the Chief Technology Officer at GSE. I manage R&D and IT functions. Our R&D teams are primarily focused on software technology development. Those are in three key areas. Uh, one is on real-time dynamic uh, simulation platform where our services group and our end customers can build full scope simulation of the plant. Uh, second is on-demand uh, e-learning platform in the cloud, 
to help customers with uh, workforce training and, and workforce uh, and readiness. And lastly, online uh, real-time monitoring platform for improving plant performance. So those are the key focus areas of our R&D group and software team. In terms of my background, I've been uh, building and delivering software technology either on-prem or in a SaaS environment, software as a service, for close to 30 years commercially in a number of organizations and in a number of technology areas, engineering, simulation, analytics, and learning and e-learning, uh, applied to a number of verticals. Uh, and uh, in effect, all those technologies uh, have kind of come together here at GSE in providing uh, unique solutions for our customers. So that's a brief background on, on my side, Adam. Great, thank you, everybody. Next question, can you please discuss in your opinion, the current status of the industry that you are responsible for? And we'll start with Don. Yeah, thanks, Adam. Um, nuclear power industry, uh, I would say that uh, it's regaining some of the momentum that uh, we were seeing pre-pandemic. Uh, really, it's kind of a, a positive outlook right now. The, the industry is looking at uh, 80 year life extensions for several of their facilities. A lot of the facilities have already updated from 40 to 60 years, but uh, 80 years is on the table now. Uh, a lot of interest in high ROI services such as our you know, on our side, our DVR power recovery and engineering program optimization uh, activities, they're in high demand at numerous client facilities. We're seeing the new reactor market emerge. You know, SMR is our front and center, uh, which is great. It's uh, it's great to see something new happening in this industry. And, uh, and I guess the, the, the big positive is that uh, the recognition by the general public that nuclear needs to be part of the... Um, the future decarbonization goals. Um, in general, public opinion, I believe, is shifting in a positive direction for our industry, which is great to see. Um, my responsibilities in that regard are ensuring that as a company, we're, and the engineering on board company, we're best positioned to support the resurgence of, uh, of this, um, this existing fleet and the new reactor initiatives with, uh, with our innovative, creative engineering solutions. And, uh, you know, position our clients to be a successful uh, component of this decarbonized environment going forward. Brian? Thanks, Don. Uh, for our group, the staffing industry, uh, it really is constantly changing. It's constantly evolving, really out of necessity. Uh, but one thing for us that's, that's certainly very clear, uh, the need for talent is not going away anytime soon. We see a number of skill shortages, uh, excuse me, skill shortages, um, a number of factors behind that, uh, an aging workforce. Uh, we, we see that across the board. Uh, we see a lot of different talent shortages in, in certain skill sets, electrical engineering, for example. Um, and, and especially, and, and Don referenced some of the new technology, as technology changes and, and new, uh, new individuals enter the workforce, they're pursuing new fields. Um, and, and this is even part of this great rotation, you know, that we see uh, as employees seek change. So for us, th there really are a lot of factors, uh, but it really only adds to the need to have a specialized partner who can identify the right talent, just emphasizing that we really have that, that specialty focus within our group. Very good. All right. So as I was saying on, on the software technology side and perspectives there, you know, we all see there is substantial growth that's affecting every industry. You know, the software is affecting every industry, industry to support operations, to support better decision making. And, um, you know, a few specific areas that are expanding rapidly. And I think we all recognize that is one is in offering technologies through the cloud. Uh, especially under a SaaS model, software as a service model. Uh, secondly, is leveraging more analytics as there are more data and more data sources to mine through and leverage. And then lastly, better integration and interoperability between different types of software. Um, and especially between different types of software from different vendors. You know, one software or one vendor cannot satisfy all requirements. And, Companies have invested in a lot of tools 
over the years and they want to take full advantage of them. And um, so if we're able to integrate more of those together, there's more value that the customer gains. Now on the specific, uh, the vertical that we're in, energy, uh, you know, we see uh, somewhat fragmented point solutions in different departments that are geared to solve one specific problem or objective. You know, a training tool to satisfy a specific departmental goal. Um, so in this industry, there's definitely room for improvement in offering more comprehensive solution that integrates better across multiple tools. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and the client organization um, you know, gain that, gains that additional value. That integration is important and the additional uh, expertise that you can load up into these software components that become more digital assistance to the users. Um, so that's a quick view on, on the status on the software. Great, thank you. What are some of the positives and challenges or barriers that you're seeing in the division you manage right now? Don? Um, yeah, so uh, I, I feel, as I mentioned before, I feel like the industry is starting to embrace its future again. We're, we're seeing that, that positive vibe, that positive note in the, in the industry that uh, it has a role and, uh, and, a, and a role to play going forward. And I think there's a, several drivers behind that. Uh, you know, becoming more strategically competitive as uh, some of the uh, factors change, like natural, natural gas price uh, increasing, some enhanced regulatory treatment, and of course the decarbonization benefit and role that I mentioned before. Uh, on, the, on the barriers side, the, the industry is going through, as you might imagine, a resource shortage, resource, you know, a variety of causes, attrition, retirements, uh, pandemic related departures, et cetera, are all, uh, they're all uh, contributing to a, a very intense resource shortage issue in the industry. But, but it, it's also a positive and that that opens a lot of, uh, a lot of doors for us. Uh, things that uh, maybe pre-pandemic were not really thought of as being you know, available solutions are now on the table. You know, some of the creative ideas and thoughts we have on how we can leverage resources are now being considered uh, as viable, which is uh, certainly a positive. Uh, I think the pandemic itself did widen consideration of those, uh, you know, different remote-based initiatives and other creative solutions uh, on our side. Uh, Brian? Thanks, Don. Uh, for us, one of the one of the biggest positives, you know, I believe that I see is is around one of our strategies to expand and, and diversify our customer base, and and our team's been working really hard with this. I mentioned earlier the importance of having that specialty focus in the industries we serve. So for us, being very strategic with our efforts to expand into some of the adjacent energy and engineering sectors uh, is part of what we're, we're working towards. And, and in the past six months alone, I believe we've added uh, 20 new agreements, uh, all for providing staffing services through in, into some of these adjacent industries. And they're all with skill sets that our team is, is familiar with. Um, we've also been expanding our training footprint uh, with a couple of new agreements at two new plant locations and several more in that pipeline. Um, Don just mentioned a, a talent shortage, and, and I'll touch on this as kind of a good segue as a, both a, a challenge but also an opportunity as, as we see a lot of talent demand and when we see one customer ask for a certain type of skill set or, or have a need, we tend to see others asking for the same. Um, and there's a lot of factors that are going to impact where candidates may end up. And again, all of this is opportunity for us uh, as we spend so much time uh, working to understand, you know, what those customers' needs are, and there's a lot of value behind those service offerings. Uh, again, we understand time is money, and with our specialty in the energy and engineering sectors, um, even with our own internal hiring team, uh, it really gives us a unique ability to, to understand the needs of our, of our customers, you know, really being a true partner. Um, and, this, and another challenge just to briefly mention, uh, we have an ongoing need 
uh, within our sector to constantly pivot based on the market conditions and what the energy policies are. Uh, you, you heard Don mention things you know, such as rising prices and others. So for us, it, it means constantly evaluating things, our customers, the job requisitions we receive. And as much as we do on the front end, we, we also have to recognize that our customers have their own challenges. Um, you know, if they have a delay, it impacts our projection. If they you know, have changes to their budget, it, it impacts our scope. And, and we've seen a lot of that, uh, especially post pandemic. But it all ties back to that strategy that I mentioned at the beginning of the question here with diversifying and expanding that customer base. So as, as trends in engineering can be further siloed within different sectors, expanding our base allows us to be less impacted uh, when certain sectors are slower than others. Very good, Brian. Uh, I think in terms of positives and, and challenges, you know, within our R&D team, uh, we've been building software for decades, uh, but it's been really through these strategic acquisitions that we've had over the past um, years that we've been able to strengthen those offerings and, and offer very unique and advanced solutions that have deep engineering and operations expertise. Um, and you know, obviously internally, we had great collaborative work between the different parts of the organization with R&D as well as uh, Don's various teams, as, as he explained, uh, in plant performance, engineering programs, dynamic simulation, design engineering. So that expertise integrated within our software is what uh, provides that uh, real value for the clients. Um, so the, the software that we're building and delivering or not just, you know, we're not building a generic platform and asking others to fill in the blanks. This has encapsulated expertise on top of the extensible uh, software platform that we have. Um, so, and we've demonstrated that through one of our product offerings called TSM Enterprise, um, uh, as well as, uh, you know, more of a holistic learning solution that we have as a part of the other product Envision On Demand. Uh, so those are some of the positives. I think in terms of challenges that we see in front of us, generally the industry is slow in adopting new technologies. Mm -hmm. uh, some of it, uh, you know, that slow adoption is understandable because of safety concerns, but in general, the industry is risk averse. But again, we are seeing that owner operators are recognizing the importance of well integrated solutions that can help their bottom line and gradually becoming more accepting of uh, SaaS solutions um, in the cloud. You know, seeing government organizations like DOD that, that have been operating there uh, in secure cloud uh, deployments. So, so I think uh, we will see uh, more improvements there in terms of offering more SaaS solutions in the cloud. Uh, but we are also very flexible in terms of allowing or delivering both on-premise and in the cloud, depending on the client requirements, and we align our strategy with what the client's IT strategy is. Param, we're gonna go back to you. What technologies or services are you most excited about as of late? Um, I think uh, the, the one which is um, TSM Enterprise that I just mentioned to you, uh, those are the, that is the product that is a culmination of that uh, strategic, um, strategic plan that we had in terms of the acquisitions and bringing in deep plant expertise in terms of operations and performance. And that is integrated within the TSM enterprise platform uh, in monitoring plants, helping improve plant performance and um, and uh, and this is something that you know more integration also has been uh, added to the um, uh, to the product with uh, what's called DVR data validation and reconciliation, and that is uh, the uh, a way for us to increase data quality of of measurements and sensors, um, and that in effect helps the clients uh, in 
like making better decisions by having better data, more reliable data, and the product uh, provides diagnostic capabilities and helps the client uh, in the remediation process. So we're very excited about that uh, TSM enterprise platform and in this continuous real-time monitoring of, uh, of the plants. And the fact that we are integrating with more tools that uh, the customers have adopted and, uh, and those tools, existing tools like asset management suites to allow them to uh, enhance their uh, task management and work management. Great, thank you. Don, what technologies or services are you most excited about as of late? You know, I'm gonna have to add to Ruam's points, Adam. Uh, we're, we're very, very excited about the TSM solution. Uh, and it, it really has been, it, it's galvanized our efforts toward, uh, toward blending the parts and pieces in our engineering organization uh, into, uh, you know, over the course of the strategic acquisition cycle, we added some very, very unique and specific parts, and those parts all operate very, very effectively on their own. But bringing them together and blending them into a solution uh, is is where we're at right now, and we're we're trying to add client value through that process. And TSM, uh, the TSM solution, really is something that we've been able to bend, uh, build around because it addresses all three areas. Uh, of our company very effectively. And then it also provides the flexibility for a client to, to pick and choose. In other words, they can start with one component of that system and then over time grow that out or build it out uh, along with its inherent flexibility to integrate with our clients, our strategic partners, software and our client software. So I would have to point toward the TSM solution as being something that I'm very excited about. Great, Brian. Um, I think I, I think I'd like to you know address something that you know I, I think really covers the the entire company, um, even on the workforce solutions side. In addition to the the traditional staffing services that we offer and those flexible options, we've really worked hard to improve the the cross selling across the engineering and workforce solutions divisions. And we're seeing some results. Um, just a couple of months ago, we, we had a sit down with one of the largest nuclear utilities in the country. That's resulted in opportunities uh, for both sides of our business. And, and then even more recently, uh, our simulation and training teams have partnered up and uncovered a need uh, to present a solution to another major utility. Um, so it's, it's really exciting to see how this entire company can come together demonstrate awareness and, and really put forth uh, a better solution for each of our customers. That's a great pivot. Uh, maybe each of you could discuss, you know, a recent project in your division that, you know, that you were involved in and how the company helped the client, you know, may, maybe give listeners a flavor of the type of service you recently provided for a client and, you know, and, and give them an idea of how reliant, um, you, you know, they are upon GSE. And let's start with Don. Sure. Uh, I, you know, I would, uh, I think I would point to uh, a, a project that our thermal performance team has recently completed, uh, actually uh, using the DVR technology that Baram alluded to, the, the, the digital verification and reconciliation process, where we built a model and then applied that model in a power recovery scenario. Uh, the model allowed for recovery of about 13 plus megawatts for this particular client. Uh, that, that's additional generation, uh, additional revenue generation that wasn't previously being accounted for. Uh, just some simple math at about $70 a megawatt hour, that's about $2 million a year that we added to their bottom line. So uh, so really I had a happy client in, in that regard. Uh, and then I, I think one other one I might point to is uh, it, it kind of goes toward bridging the, the historic gap between uh, engineering and simulation. Uh, you know, we, we talked about our dynamic simulation library that we built that is part of our TSM and uh, being able to apply that to clients benefit as they upgrade components, analyze data on a real-time basis and real-time scenarios and, and give them that comfort level that those new upgrades and the parts and pieces that interface with those upgrades are going to work 
has been very, very satisfying and, and beneficial to our clients. Aram? I think I can kind of follow what Don mentioned again in that area of uh, plant performance, where uh, with a particular client, it was successfully rolled out uh, at across their fleet uh, in all of their plant units and something to continuously monitor the plant performance with a full implementation of uh, data quality enhancement through DVR. And, um, and the client uh, has come back and they want to enhance that solution with additional services plus integrations with other plant solutions like asset management suite um, uh, that, they have, uh, that they have at their sites and to help streamline their uh, work and task planning. So it's kind of a continued uh, uh, implementation and additional implementation at that customer site. Brian? I'm sure. So for the workforce solutions team, I think you really need to cover a couple of examples here to get a flavor of the, of the services and value that we provide. Uh, we, we started a project last year in the petrochemical industry, and it, it's really a good example of a rapid response um, for temporary needs and, and some other services. We had a customer that had a unique circumstance. They, they had to change staffing partners quickly. Um, now our team really stepped up. Not, not only did we provide them with some traditional recruiting services as, as the project moved forward, with build engineering, quality, safety, uh, some subject matter experts and some startup, but it was those initial aspects that really required us to be able to respond quickly um, and assume responsibility for a number of employees who may have otherwise been out of work, even if temporarily, but equally important from the customer side, we were able to do all of this and avoid service dis disruptions for them. Um, getting, keeping their, you know, those activities, part of that transition on time within the budget. And from a different perspective, uh, our training services, they're frequently set up as fixed price projects, which is really a, a different dynamic that you don't find in a staffing partner. But we recently completed a, a phase of a project that was tied to plant safety. And this particular project it's been in process for several years. Um, the plant needed someone to help move this from a concept to reality. And it's a very, very unique skill set. And we were able to provide the right talent for that. And as we completed the, that phase of the project, and, and I mentioned how unique the skill set was, um, we were able to identify very quickly. Uh, the next person who's going to be able to come in and oversee the next phase of the implementation of this project. And, and we all know the importance when we're talking about safety uh, within that sector. And I really can't say enough to our team uh, and their abilities uh, with how they were able to step up and get this done. Let's see if we could squeeze in a couple more questions here um, quickly. Can you detail any macro events that are positive indicators for your division right now, Brian? Sure. Um, quickly, for us, job availability being at high numbers within the U.S., you know, certainly deeper within each individual customer. How about you, Don? I think uh, Brian froze up there. Sure. I would, uh, I would have to point toward, you know, industry performance optimization initiatives. Uh, you know, this is all, all goes back to that positioning, our client positioning to be part of the future decarbonized power generation landscape. Uh, those are the major drivers. Uh, and we have, we have numerous initiatives underway, many as pilots with current clients uh, and others in the development cycle that will add value to those objectives. Uh, an example would be a, a report we prepared working jointly with the industry, and we currently have that submitted to the NRC Nuclear Regulatory Commission for uh, review and approval uh, that would allow us to apply uh, some of our thermal performance technologies toward enhancements of uh, plant feed water flow measurement. Um, and of course, the associated power increases. You know, an average increase of one to two percent uh, is anticipated, uh, representing, you know, ongo ongoing dollar increases. And, uh, and, and all this is based, this is a, this is a continual revenue enhancement for our client based on a one-time investment through us on their part. 
and Barra. Um, I think as Don uh, mentioned, kind of following that line of thinking, the one, one element of the pandemic caused this reevaluation of accessibility to solutions. Um, so with some positive moves toward, you know, IT departments or the various divisions of the customers um, in, a, in a specific area, um, being accepting of uh, cloud-based SaaS solutions and, uh, and accepting of the uh, cloud security features. And I think that in effect reduces the adoption um, costs and effort that IT departments have to go through. So I, I feel that will allow us to more easily deploy uh, software and uh, capabilities that we have and uh, allow the customer to benefit from it. Great. Uh, let's just conclude here. What, if anything, would you like to share with investors or what, in your opinion, do you think they should be aware of? Param? I think on this software side, um, you know, let's say a solution that we provide a customer, software plus services. The example that we mentioned to you on, on TSM Enterprise is very representative of what we've been able to accomplish working successfully across the different divisions that are complementing each other and creating value for the client. And, and, and all of that became possible through our acquisition uh, strategy. Um, and, and that's the solution that we are adding more capability and more domain expertise to. And it's worth mentioning that you know, any technology that we develop or that we want to introduce, we first and foremost focus on where we are strong in. You know, we're not trying to solve all the problems at once. We focus on what we're strong in and focus on where we have deep bench of practical knowledge on engineering operations and uh, engineering and operations, uh, areas that Don has described and, and he's managing. So kind of working across the divisions to build the capabilities into a decision support system. Um, and, and that helps our clients make better decisions and uh, allows us to kind of expand our, our offerings there. Don, anything else to add there? You know, Brahm, I think, uh, I think, I think in summary here, you know, to build on what you're, you're discussing and, and to, to kind of leave a message with, uh, with folks as we, as we wrap up is, uh, you know, where we've come from and where we are now, uh, I mean, we were we were very unique individual companies operating in, in in very effective ways. You know, we have well well refined capabilities defined and developed over time. Uh, but really, the focus now, a, as I see it, is we're we're just starting to hit our stride on integrating all of these capabilities and building around creative software tools uh, that your team's providing, Rob. Uh, but, but this, I, I think we're just starting to scratch the surface of being able to, uh, to leverage all of the uh, strategic parts and pieces of our engineering organization to our clients' benefit. Right. Brian? Sure. Uh, a good wrap up here is, I think we're very, very relationship driven. Uh, both of our, you know, both with our customers and our internal teams, uh, you know, we, we definitely take the time to understand what, what's going on, what the customer's needs are, the challenges associated with projects, objectives, and with our focus in the energy and engineering sectors, it, it really allows us to offer a true expertise where others might fall short. Um, I think really beyond those focus areas, our internal team whether it's workforce solutions or the engineering side, we're comprised of industry experts, hands-on experience. So we we know what uh, we know what, how to understand and ask questions to to get to those objectives. So whether we're talking technology, engineering, or staffing, we really have a unique ability to combine all of those services offered and offer a real end-to-end -end solution for our customers. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, th thank you, Kyle, Baram, Don, Brian. Thank you for doing this, and, and thank you very much for your time today. We, we greatly appreciate it. To anyone out there that's not already signed up for a one-on-one, -on -one, again, please send me an email at lowensteinerlithampartners.com or, again, visit www.lithampartners.com forward slash virtual and click the one-on-one -on -one meeting request button. We hope you all enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you. Thanks, thank you, Adam. Thank you all.